What's up, everybody? So we've been getting a lot of requests on building an Active Directory lab environment and what that looks like. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and build out a lab environment. We're going to have a domain controller and a couple of user machines. And we're just going to set that up so that you can actually attack this environment. Now, this is not an attack video. I will give you resources in the video on how to find those attacks. And this kind of assumes that you know a little bit about what Active Directory is. You don't have to have any experience setting it up. That's what we're going to do here. And we're going to talk about at a high level why these certain settings that we use are vulnerable. And a lot of these settings are just out of the box settings. So we'll talk through some of the attacks very, very high level again. And I'll provide those resources for you to learn more about the attacks if you want to. So before we get started, as always, if you like the video, please do comment down below. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell hit the like, do whatever you want, but uh, please do show some love for the channel if you are loving the channel. So from here, let's take a quick ad from our sponsor and then we'll dive right into this video. This video is brought to you by our sponsors and friend of the channel, Vixing. Now Vixing has just released a new mechanical keyboard. It's this guy right here. And you may have seen it in the beginning of the video. Now this mechanical keyboard is RGB backlit and comes equipped with 18 preset light modes as well as the ability to customize your own keys. It comes with nice blue switches and a 96 key layout that saves space but acts like a full keyboard and keeps all the same functions. Also, it just sounds amazing. At $39.99, you really can't beat the price for what it offers. If you don't believe me, just go ahead and check the reviews. Lastly, Vixing is running a promotion right now for I Love Coding. This event is where you can join other coding lovers and receive a discount of 20% off of certain products, including the mechanical keyboard seen in the video. So for links and more information, please see the description down below. All right, let's get started. So there's gonna be a tiny bit of death by PowerPoint and Trust me, I hate PowerPoint more than anybody, but it's a tiny bit of a necessity just to kind of go over the lab requirements and what we're gonna be building out, and then we'll get hands-on and we'll leave the PowerPoint behind. So why should I build a lab? What, what is interesting about this Active Directory attack lab? Well, from an Active Directory perspective, when you're becoming a penetration tester or ethical hacker, 95% of the Fortune 1000 companies utilize Active Directory in their environments. From my perspective, I have never had an internal assessment that did not have Active Directory somewhere in its environment. And what does this even mean, right? Well, Active Directory relates to what is called internal penetration testing. Now, a lot of courses out there and a lot of material out there covers what I call external tactics and methodologies. Not a lot of them cover the internal methodologies and tactics. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to build out that lab and practice because that course material is really just not out there. So you can build out this lab, look up some tutorials online, watch some videos, and just kind of piece together a lot of these attacks, figure them out, and then you'll look really good in an interview when you can talk about these attacks and even how to defend against them. So from here, let's talk about the lab overview. So the setup is going to be like this for me. I'm going to be running a Windows 10 Pro base, and on that I'll be utilizing VMware Pro. So we'll talk about that here in a minute as to what you can use depending on what operating system you're on, but I will be virtualizing everything. Now my environment contains one Windows 2019 server, and that acts as a domain controller. And then I have two Windows 10 computers, and those act as user machines. Now you could technically get away with one computer. However, utilizing two is ideal because we can use relay attacks in other attacks that will allow us to take full advantage of all the techniques that are available to us. Lastly, there will be a attack machine. Now for the specs of this lesson, we're not gonna be utilizing an attack machine. This is just how to build out this lab. So now the recommended specs that I always say is about 80 gigabytes in disk space. That's 20 gigabytes for each machine since we technically have four being virtualized and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm utilizing 32, 16 should be okay. You could apply two gigabytes of RAM to each, plus you have your base operating system that has around eight gigabytes or so. If you have 32, you can utilize four gigabytes. And if you have eight, 
You can utilize one gigabyte or so for each machine. Just understand that you might experience really, really slow lab. Let's quickly cover some of the possible attacks and scenarios that you can utilize in this lab. Now you can do LLMNR and MBTNS poisoning, SMB relay attacks, IPv6 attacks, pass the password, pass the hash, token impersonation, curb roasting, golden ticket. You could do a bunch of enumeration with PowerView, Bloodhound, or other enumeration tools. You could do credential dumping with Mimikatz, and there's a lot more than this, but these are just some of the really common attack scenarios that I like to cover. Now, you may be saying, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. I'm really new to this. I don't know any of these attacks, and that's okay. My suggestion to you is to screenshot what I just showed you and go out there and learn some of these attacks, and I'm going to provide some resources for you. So going down the list, adsecurity.org is one of the most fantastic websites out there. If you are a beginner, it might be a little complicated, but they have all different kinds of AD resources in here. And once you kind of figure out what you're looking for, this really, really helps. Now this might be considered advanced reading. Once you kind of get some of the generic attacks down, you come in here, read more about the latest and greatest of attacks and really get into Active Directory. On top of that, there is a guy named Harmjoy, and he writes fantastic material as well, blog.harmjoy.net, and I'll be posting all this in the description down below, so don't worry if you're not writing this down. A bunch of different attacks here related to AD. He is fantastic when it comes to Active Directory, and uh, some of the common attacks that we use are, are simply because of him and his research. So he's fantastic when it comes to Active Directory. I'm going to throw a little bit of myself out there. I have a lot of this material. So say, for example, you're looking for LLMNR, which is one of the attacks. You can just come in and type LLMNR and search it on my channel. And you could see, hey, Active Directory exploitation here. Oh, look, here it is as well, popping a shell with SMB Relay. Also, the full penetration testing course that's on my channel has a lot of these attacks. So if you come here, you can sort by the most popular, and you'll see that course probably pop up right at the top. And that will give you an indication on a lot of these attacks and what you can do to utilize them. Now, if you're in the market for a course and you want to get more hands on, I do have a course out on Udemy. You can utilize that as well. It covers pretty much anything and everything related to uh, the beginnings of ethical hacking all the way through building out this lab and doing all these attacks that I'm showing you plus more. So if you want that hand held walkthrough, type deal, you can come out here and uh, for the next week or so, there will be a special discount that I'll put down that'll take this course under $20. So if you're in the market for a course, this is it. Otherwise, free options exist. You can absolutely piece this together or you can just Google the attacks and look for walkthroughs as well. So hopefully that gives you a good idea as to what you're gonna be capable of doing and how you can utilize that once you are done building out this lab. So let's go ahead and now dive right into the lab build itself. In order to build out our lab, we need to run what is called a VM or virtualized machine. Now there are two dominant tools out there that we can utilize based on the OS that we're running. I'm going to be utilizing what is called VMware Pro. Now I'm showing you the free option here, which is Workstation Player. If you're already familiar with this, you can go ahead and, and kind of skip ahead but what we're going to be using is VMware Workstation Player if you are using Windows or Linux. If you are running on Mac OS X, you can use VirtualBox here. And I'll paste these links down in the description below as well. And you can actually run this on Windows, Linux, Solaris as well. I just prefer and have the preference for VMware, but you can utilize whichever of these tools that you want. Now, go ahead and download these if you don't have it downloaded already. It's very point and click. So just go ahead, next, next, next through, accept, and then get it up and running. And then what I show you on either tool, whatever you download, whatever I show you can be applied either way on the tools. They're very, very similar. So pause now if you need to, and then meet me back once you have this downloaded and installed. And then we're gonna work on downloading the files that we need to actually get this up and running. So to actually start building out the lab, we're gonna be utilizing Microsoft's Evaluation Center. You can go out to Google and just type in Microsoft Evaluation Center, and you'll be brought to this here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just open right click new window with Windows 2019 server and Windows 10 enterprise. So for example, you'll have Windows Server 2019. And these are evaluation copies, meaning that they're good for 180 days for Server 2019 and 90 days for Windows 10. If I'm being honest with you, you can completely ignore that. These servers won't just stop working because you haven't bought the license. So I have really, really old licenses or expired servers that I utilize for my lab environments and it's absolutely fine. But these are for you to demo and evaluate their materials. So from here, you're gonna go ahead and select ISO when you get to the server page and hit continue. And it's gonna ask you for your first name, last name, company name, all this stuff here. And I just put in a bunch of fake material. Doesn't matter what you're gonna, what you're gonna have here. Just select random stuff and it doesn't matter. Go ahead and just say continue and then select your language, English for me, and then you'll hit download and download the ISO file. Same thing here with Windows 10 Enterprise. Download the ISO Enterprise. Enter in your information. Again, it does not have to be real information. It can be fake information. Hit continue and download your ISO file. Now, these ISO files are rather large, so go ahead and get them downloaded. Pause the video again if you need to. Once they're downloaded, Meet me with your virtualized machine software, either VMware or VirtualBox, open and ready to go. And we'll go ahead and start building out this lab step by step. Now we're moving on to the actual build of the workstation. So you should have your ISO files downloaded, your VM software up and running. Here's my workstation pro. And we're gonna go ahead and just select create a new virtual machine. And we'll do typical hit next, and then it's gonna say, where is your installer disk image file? Go ahead and browse to that, and we're gonna start with your server. So here's my server eval, and I'm gonna go ahead and just hit next. It says server 2016 detected, that's fine. And it's gonna ask for a product key. Do not provide a product key, and do not provide a password. This is absolutely fine. Go ahead and just do standard, and we'll hit next and it'll give you this prompt, go ahead and just say yes. And then it's gonna ask you, where do you want to install this? I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this default. You can see I already have a server here of a, of a 2016. I'm gonna go ahead and name it server 2019 because that's actually what it is. I'm gonna hit next. And it's gonna say, how much disk space do you wanna give it? I say 60 gigabytes and split it into virtual disk images. So it's only gonna utilize what it needs which isn't a lot of space. So again, I say about 20 gigabytes per machine, and then this will just build as you were to download items into it. So go ahead and hit next once you have this figured out. And then uncheck this power on this virtual machine after creation, super important to make sure this is unchecked. So you go ahead and hit finish. And now it should load this machine like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and edit this virtual machine and we're going to need to do a few things here. First of all, depending on the RAM that you have, this is your opportunity to change this. I'm only gonna be using two gigabytes of RAM, which is 2048 on the slider. And we're gonna go ahead and also take out this floppy disk. So go ahead and remove this. The issue is if we were to power on our, our machine right away, it would actually cause this auto install to load with this floppy for whatever reason and cause a bunch of issues for us. So we're gonna make sure that that floppy is removed, two gigabytes of memory, and then we're gonna to come to the network adapter here and make sure that the network adapter is set to NAT. So make sure you see this as well. And then go ahead and hit okay. And then power on this machine and get your finger ready because we are going to need to press a button pretty much right away. So that'll allow us to get the Windows setup running. And if you're stuck and you can't see your mouse, hit control alt that'll get you out of that VM and then back out onto your actual computer. So now I'm gonna try to make this bigger. We only can get so big with this, unfortunately, until we install the tools needed. But for now, we have Windows Server 2019. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And I'm gonna hit install now on this. Okay, now we're brought to this screen. We're gonna say Windows Server 2019 standard evaluation, desktop experience. Go ahead and hit next.
accept the license, go ahead and hit next, and then select custom install here. Come in here, it should say drive zero unallocated, hit new, hit apply, hit okay, and then go ahead and hit next. And now it's gonna begin installing Windows. This will take a minute, it's going to likely reboot. So go ahead and pause the video again. Once everything has rebooted, you're on to a screen where you can make another action. Come back and we'll continue on. So now you should be brought to this screen and it's asking you to set up an administrator password. You can just go ahead and type in anything you want. I'm just gonna say something like password one and it's gonna be a weak password, but this is a weak lab environment. We're just setting up a pen test lab environment so that it can be penetrated or hacked and whatever we wanna do with it. So go ahead and hit finish once you've got that set up and you should be brought to this screen here. You can come up here and just hit all control delete with this little uh, three button prompt. And then it's gonna ask you for that password you just set up. I'm gonna type in password one, hit enter, and then it's gonna start logging in. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and start setting up our machine with how we want it. First thing I wanna do is I want to go ahead and come up here and go to workstation. And I want to go to VM and install VMware tools because Otherwise, this is going to be very small for us the rest of the time, and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and install VMware tools on this, and that'll allow this to be a little bit bigger. It should give us a prompt here in just a second saying that a drive has uh, come up. We can also click on this PC and see for it here. So we can go ahead and just double click, run the setup, and just click next through this, select the complete tool setup and install. So once this is complete, it should allow our screen to go full size automatically. And then we'll just need to set up a few things. While we're doing this, what we're gonna be doing is setting up what is called a domain controller here in just a couple more uh, steps. And we'll cover what a domain controller actually is. Now don't restart your computer at this moment. Go ahead and just say no. And we're going to change the PC name while we can. So I'm gonna say PC name and go ahead and just select that. And now name this whatever you want to name this. I'm gonna rename this PC and I'm gonna call this Hydra DC because I like Marvel. I'm gonna make my Active Directory environment Marvel themed. So go ahead and hit next, and then we will need to restart once we rename the computer. So once that's up and ready with the prompt, go ahead and reboot to your machine. And then if you need to take a break, anything else, go ahead and pause. I'm just gonna let this speed up for a second, reboot, and then I'll meet you back when we're logged in. So now we are officially logged in, and you should be brought to your server manager dashboard here. We're gonna go ahead and just come up to manage and we're gonna add roles and features. And go ahead and just select next, next, next. And we're going to add in Active Directory Domain Services. Hit add features, next, 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 and install. Now this is gonna take a minute to install and I wanna talk about Active Directory here for just a minute. So what is Active Directory? It is a directory service that was developed by Microsoft to manage Windows domain networks. And that's what we're setting up. We're setting up a domain network. And for this domain network, we're going to be storing information that is related to objects. Now these objects can be computers, users, printers, etc. And you can think of this like a phone book. It just stores information that you can go and look up later. Now we're setting up a domain controller that is the hub of all this information. And our machines that we're going to be setting up here in just a minute, we're gonna be utilizing those to connect to this domain controller. And the domain controller is gonna store all these objects, including what computers are connected, what users we have, etc. So that's all we're doing here is we're setting up this Active Directory environment and if you've ever been in a workplace setting and you're able to 
log into a computer and then maybe you're able to go to another computer down the hall and use the same credentials and log in there, chances are that was Active Directory. So now this is finished setting up, let's go ahead and hit close. And then we're gonna come here and you see this flag here. We're gonna go ahead and say promote this server to a domain controller. Now, what are we gonna call this domain? So I like Marvel, I'm gonna call this marvel.local. And it says add a domain to a existing domain. We're gonna go ahead and just make this a new forest. And sorry, gonna have to type it again, marvel.local, just like this on the root domain name. Go ahead and hit next. And you can call this whatever you want, by the way. I'm just using this Marvel theme. Feel free to use your own creative expression. Now, we're gonna need a password here. I'm just gonna make it the exact same thing, password one. Go ahead and hit next. Next. And this will take a second to populate. It should pull up your NetBIOS domain name as Marvel or whatever you chose for it. Okay, that's populated. Go ahead and hit next. And if at any time you're doing this along with me and it's going slower, my environment's going faster than yours, feel free to pause and keep going. Go ahead and hit next here and hit next one more time. Now it's gonna do a prereq check. This is going to take a minute here. Once this is finished doing its prereq check, go ahead and just hit the install button, hit next and install, install everything and get this all rebooted. So that's your next task, just next, install, reboot, and then meet me back when you're logged into the machine again or at the login prompt. So go ahead now and hit install. This will install, ask you to reboot, reboot, meet me at the login prompt, and I'll see you over there. Okay, we are back to a login screen. So now we're gonna go ahead and log back in. You can see that it says Marvel slash administrator, meaning that we do have a domain now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type password one and log in. It should bring up the server prompt. We've got one more feature that we need to install and that is just the uh, certificate. So we're gonna install a certificate so that we could have LDAP secure running and we're gonna need that later on if you ever want to utilize attacks against LDAP-S or something like an IPv6 takeover attack utilizes LDAP-S and you can get pretty creative with it. So we're going to go ahead and go to manage and add roles and features on this one. We'll hit next a couple times just like before, click through. And then we're looking for Active Directory Certificate Services. So right here, go ahead and select that and add the feature. Hit next, next again, next, next. And then we'll restart destination server automatically if required. And we'll just say yes. We're gonna go ahead and hit install. And this is going to install as well. We're gonna have the same situation where the flag's gonna come up and we're going to need to uh, promote the certificate or add the certificate in once it's installed. So go ahead and just let this run through, pause here again if you need to, and then once it's done, go ahead and meet me back and we'll go ahead and install this certificate. All right, your screen should look like this. Go ahead, hit close. Same deal up here with the flag. Configure the certificate services. And we're just gonna hit next on the credentials. Click Certification Authority up here. Hit Next. Enterprise CA is fine. Root CA is fine. We're gonna use a new private key. Next on the default, next again. And then validity period, I always like to put 99 years, just so that it never expires. You never know how long you're gonna have this lab for. Let's go ahead and hit Next, Next, and then Configure. Now, this is configured. We need to go ahead and restart the server to make sure that this takes effect. So we're gonna do that. And then once this is restarted, again, go ahead and just log back in and we'll move on to the next step. So go ahead and pause, let this reboot, move on to the next step. Now that we've got all the settings configured, we're gonna go ahead and add some users to this. We're gonna add a file share and we're gonna set up a service account so that way we can have a Kerberosing attack be possible later. So first of all, let's go up to tools and we're gonna to say Active Directory Users and Computers right here. 
and go ahead and click on this marvel.local and you can come in here now and this is kind of where your objects are. We have these, these OUs, right? And these organizational units and these are just basically folders. You can see here's one of your objects. It's a computer, it's a domain controller. And you see that's under domain controllers. Once we join computers to the network, that's gonna show up here in the, the computer section. We also have users. We only have one user right now. That's the administrator and that's okay. And we got a bunch of security groups in here, uh, including one of the targeted groups by pen testers, which is domain admins. You see this guest account, anytime it has this little down arrow next to it, that means it's actually disabled right now. So I like to add a organizational unit for groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and just say new organizational unit here. And I'm just gonna call this groups, hit okay. And then I'm gonna go over to users and I'm just gonna take anything that's not administrator and move it into groups, just say yes, grab all these, move it into groups, and now it's a little bit more organized. So the first thing I wanna do is create a few users. You can create as few or as many as you want. I'm going to create a domain administrator, and I'm going to create a couple of user accounts as well. So we already have our administrator account. What I'm gonna do is just create a new user here, and I'm going to have the user of Frank Castle. And this user is just gonna be F Castle for my naming convention, just like that. And then next, and I'm gonna make the password, password one as well. And I'm making it all the same thing across the board because password reuse in networks is really big, especially when it comes for password attacks, like pass the password or pass the hash. If you can capture one password or one hash and throw it around the network with a tool like Crack Map Exec, you can actually leverage that and gain access to a lot of machines if that reuse is in existence. So go ahead here and just say password never expires, hit next and finish. Go ahead and right click and just copy this user. And I'm going to add in a second user who is Peter Parker. And I'm just gonna call this P Parker, hit next. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and just make the same password of password one. And same deal, password never expires, next, finish. Now, lastly, right click on your administrator and we're gonna go ahead and copy the administrator. And I'm going to add in a SQL service account. It is very common to have service accounts in your network. This account is gonna look something like this, SQL service. Now it's very common to see service accounts running as domain administrator. That is a no-no, but it happens a lot and we can run attacks against this such as Kerberosing where we can abuse this and try to uh, attack a weak password. And we're going to make this a weak password because that'll allow us to do a proof of concept. I'm gonna make this password my password one, two, three pound. And I'll show you how to spell that, but it's a capital M, capital Y lowercase password, one, two, three, pound. Password never expires, next, finish. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this user and put in the description, password is my password, one, two, three, pound. Why am I doing this? Because a lot of domain admins will come in here and they'll put a password in their description and then guess what? we can actually see that. We don't need administrative privileges to be able to pull down a lot of these properties from a domain controller. So if we can see these objects and we can get the descriptions pulled down, we could see what the password is. And I would say about 10% of the time, maybe 15%, I see a password in a description and that gives us access to an account. We're able to own that account. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and make this SQL service an actual service. We're gonna set up what's called a SPN or a service principal name, which is needed for a service. So go ahead and go to command and run this as administrator. And we're going to type in the following command, set SPN dash A, and this is Hydra DC dash GC SQL service dot Marvel dot local and I'm just gonna utilize port 60111. And it's gonna say Marvel, if I could type, Marvel SQL Service, just like this. So if you need a second, go ahead and type this out. And we're just associating this SPN and a port together. Okay, and it's updating the object. 
Now it's registering a service principal name for this SQL service. And we can check this that is actually there with set SPN dash T Marvel dot local. And we'll do a dash Q to look this up like this. And then go ahead and hit enter. And you should see down at the bottom, we have our SQL service right here on port 60111. Perfect. Okay, so SPN is all set up. We can now perform the Kerberos attack uh, in our environment. So next, a lot of attacks in environments are related to SMB. So we need to have SMB ports 139, 445 open. I'm gonna go ahead and just go out to the C drive and make a new folder and call that HackMe. And then I'm gonna come into our files and storage services. And here there is a share. So see shares right here. Go ahead and do a task, new share. And then we're just gonna say SMB share quick, next. And then next, actually back, sorry. Um, we're going to use a custom path and we're going to use hack me as the folder select next and then next here next next and create okay close and now we have smb open in our network uh, so we can perform attacks against 139 445 not only against the domain controller but we're going to do the same kind of deal for our user machines as well so that they're discoverable on the network so last thing, we're gonna go ahead and go out to a command prompt. And we're just gonna type in ipconfig and pull down the IP address of this server. So now what we have done is we have set up our domain controller for this Active Directory environment. We now need to build out a couple of user machines. These user machines are going to be identical. So as we build these out, go ahead and build one or build both at the same time if you want. I'm going to build one and then talk about the other and we'll see what it all looks like when it's said and done and what other settings you might want to consider once you have your lab environment built. So let's go ahead and now move on and we're going to go up here and go to workstation, file, new virtual machine. Same deal this time. We're going to go ahead and hit next, browse. And I'm going to select this one here, which is my Windows 10 workstation. And go ahead and hit next. Same deal, just Windows 10. We'll just call it Enterprise. And we're going to hit next, say yes. And then this, obviously, I have multiple machines again. Same deal, don't worry about that. I'm going to hit next, split the virtual machines up. Don't power it on, just like before. Go ahead and hit finish. And this will create the uh, file on disk. What we're going to do is the same exact setup as before. So if you don't recall, we're going to edit the settings. We're going to go in there, make sure it's running on NAT network, two gigabytes of RAM or more, depending on your setup, and to remove that floppy, most importantly. The Windows 10 is going to take a little bit longer to set up. It has a beefier install. Uh, so go ahead and hit it, edit your virtual machine settings. And again, if you want to do two at once, you're more than welcome. So go ahead, two gigabytes is fine. I'm gonna remove this floppy drive and we should be running NAT. So hit okay there. And now we're gonna go ahead and power on this virtual machine. Make sure your fingers are ready. We're gonna hit any key and that's gonna to boot to the setup. Now the setup is going to be pretty similar to how we did this for the other machine. I'm gonna utilize the, the same passwords across the board um, and just keep it simple. So we're gonna hit next here and install now. And this will bring up that prompt. We're gonna set up our files again, or our structure of our disk. And then as you need to, again, just pause if you need to. I accept the license terms, custom install. And we're gonna say new, apply, okay. And look similar to before, next and go ahead and let this install. So go ahead, pause your video, meet me back once you're at the next prompt, and we'll go ahead and move forward with this install. 
So that probably took you about, I don't know, five minutes or so, a little bit longer, as I said. So you should be brought to this screen. Go ahead and pick whatever your region is. I'm in the US, so I'm gonna say US and say yes. And then keyboard layout for me is the US, so yes. Skip the second keyboard layout. And then we're gonna do a little bit of setup here. So uh, pause again as you need to, wait it out, and then meet me back when you're ready. Now you should be brought to this screen here where it says sign in with Microsoft. Go ahead and just say domain join instead. And then it's gonna say, who's gonna use this PC? So I have Frank Castle, so Frank Castle is gonna use this PC. Frank Castle. And then your other one can be whoever. I made Frank Castle and Peter Parker, so you can use those users. And then create a super memorable password. Guess what? Password one for me. Next. And then I'm going to confirm that sucker. And you would think that they would make you utilize a, uh, a stronger password policy, but they don't. So my first pet's name was Bob. And then my city I was born in was Bob. And then one more, we've got your childhood nickname. Guess what? That was Bob. So next, next, next. We're going to say uh, do more with devices. Go ahead and say no. Decline. All these features, just turn all this stuff off. It's really just, it's nonsense. So go ahead, turn all this off, and then hit accept. And it's going to do its wonderful high screen if you've never seen this before. Uh, so same process here. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to come in. We're going to have to set up the install of the VMware tool so that we can get this to a nice full screen. And then we're going to rename this computer, reboot it, and try to join the domain once we do. So go ahead and pause one more time here. We're going to let this do its install and then meet me once you're actually on a Windows screen and logged in. Okay, so your screen should look something like this. And now we're going to go up here, same deal as before, go to the VM, install your VMware tools, hit install, go ahead and go out to the folder and we're going to install those. All right. And this is going to be same thing, just next, complete, next, next, next. So once this pops up, all right, and that's going to install. While we're waiting on that to install, we can go ahead and change the PC name. So we'll just say PC name, start typing it out. And I'm going to call this the Punisher, something along the lines of the Punisher, because that's whose machine it's going to be. Uh, you can call this whatever you want, um, the Punisher 2. I have one one other one in my network, so we'll just call this 2. And we'll hit Next. And then we're going to have to reboot here. And then we'll end up joining this to the domain, see what it looks like once it's joined the domain. So go ahead and reboot. And so from here, if you're doing this, basically all you need to do is repeat all these steps. I know I said it once, I'm gonna say it again. Repeat all these steps, make your second machine. Now, that machine is gonna be utilized for uh, SMB relay attacks and other attacks would, related to relays. If you're tight on space, again, that's an optional machine to set up. We can perform a lot of these attacks with just one machine in the network. And let's go ahead now and log back in here as Frank Castle, password one. And then I'm going to jo join the domain now. So remember on Windows Server, we came in here and we grabbed our IP address. I'm going to grab that one more time because I don't remember it. And mine is 192.168.57.143. I'm going to copy that or at least attempt to. And I'm going to come into here. We're going to right click and open network and internet settings down here below. We're going to change adapter options. We're going to double click on Ethernet zero. Go to properties. Go to IPv4 and double click. And we're going to use DNS server here. Go ahead and paste your DNS server. Your DNS server is going to be your domain controller. All right. So that will allow us to actually be able to communicate with it 
at a level where we can join the domain. So once you have that done, go ahead and go to a command prompt. Actually, don't go to command prompt. We won't need to go ahead and just type in domain and it'll say access worker school. Go ahead and click on that. Hit connect up here. And we're going to join our domain now. So join this device to a local Active Directory domain. The domain is marvel.local. Hit next. That should pop up. If this does not pop up, then you're not communicating between your domain controller and this machine, all right? Now go ahead and type in administrator and password one or whatever password you set up. Hit OK. It should accept the credentials. Go ahead and just skip this account and restart now. So that's going to join the computer to the domain. Let's pop over to our server and go into our, uh, our Active Directory users and computers. Come over to computers and hit refresh. And you can see now that the Punisher 2 computer has been added here. So we now have access to this. And what we're going to do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna log in as the Marvel administrator. We're gonna set up something on this machine and then I'm gonna instruct you how you should set it up on your other machine or your secondary machine so that you have access to do some relay attacks. So come in here and go to other user, sign into, we're gonna do Marvel slash administrator. We'll say password one. That will log into this computer and then we're going to make the user Frank Castle, F Castle, the domain user, a local administrator on this computer. So it's very common in networks, Active Directory networks to have local administrators or users be local administrators of their own computers. Whether that's right or wrong, it's not right. Um, we're going to let them do that and we're gonna emulate that sort of network here. And that's going to allow us to have access to a lot of common attacks and be able to elevate privileges on that machine via SMB, uh, et cetera. So go ahead and come here and we're going to, we're going to say manage and go to computer management. Load that up, local users and groups, go to groups, administrators, and then we're gonna add administrator here and we're going to add F castle. You should be able to check and auto complete that. Say okay, apply and okay. Now, last thing, and you're gonna do this on both machines. So let me type this out on a notepad. You have machine one, for me, that's the Punisher, right? If I can spell it, the Punisher and F castle is a local admin. You have machine two, that is Spider-Man. And P. Parker should be a local admin. Now, on these machines, you could do it either way. You can have F. Castle as a local admin here, and you can have P. Parker if you want, or just one location if you want as well. But I like to just have it in one place or the other, but you can have Peter Parker and Frank Castle um, as admins on these machines and that will allow you to perform relay attacks in the network. So go ahead and set that up. I'll actually emulate that here with the computer management one more time. So we'll go to computer management and we'll set that up. And then we're going to set up the SMB for this and we'll have SMB enabled and it'll allow for a lot more attacks as well. So administrators, I'm gonna add P Parker here, check names, hit okay, apply, there we go. And then come into here, open a folder and go to network. And it says network discovery is turned off. We're going to go ahead and turn on network discovery and file sharing. That enables 139, 445. We should be able to start seeing machines pop up like the Punisher. We need to be able to enter in credentials, et cetera, to access these. But now we have network discovery on. So what does this all mean? Let's go back to the PowerPoint and kind of talk through this since we've got this set up now. So let's go back one slide. Possible attack scenarios. LLMNR poisoning. LLMNR is a feature that is enabled by default on a Windows setting. It allows us to capture hashes and either take them offline and crack them or use what are called relay attacks to pass them along. We have set up SMB relay attacks because there is a feature called SMB signing that has automatically disabled 
in a Windows network on workstations. So we have two machines or we can relay a credential from one machine to another via that LLMNR. And so that attack scenario is now set up. IPv6 is enabled by default. And we have the LDAP S set up with the certificate. And you're, you're seeing here that a lot of this is just default settings. And that's, that's really what Active Directory is. It's abusing a lot of these default configurations and just out of the box settings that are quote unquote features but they allow us to attack networks that aren't secure, or utilizing strong credentials, or just not having the best policies in place. Now we have SMB enabled, which is going to allow us to utilize pass the password or pass the hash on these machines. Token impersonation is a feature of Windows and is there by default. Uh, Kerberosing we set up when we added the SQL service user. And golden ticket attacks are a feature that we can abuse by default. PowerView, Bloodhound, etc., Mimi Cats, all that we can install and utilize in this network, play around with enumeration as well. So all of these attack scenarios have been set up for us. Now it is your task to go out there and learn these scenarios and figure out how to pull these off in your network, but it's fully possible to do every single one of these attacks that are on the screen plus more. The only thing that's not here would be more advanced attacks and things that abuse uh, items like trusts. So if you have multiple domain controllers or if you have a parent domain controller and a child domain controller, and that just gets to become a bigger and bigger network and you need more resources. So this is built for the uh, home user that has a somewhat decent computer, a little bit of RAM, a little bit of space and can build out this attack scenarios. So hopefully this has been informative for you. I know we kind of just went through the build. There was a lot of start, stop, start, stop. But now you have that foundation. You might not have any idea what's going on right now, and that's okay, but you have the foundation. Now it's up to you to take the foundation, look at these possible attacks, and work your way through it. I guarantee you there is a blog or resource out there for every single attack listed on this screen. So I challenge you to work on the left side down and then the right side down and work in that order. Figure it out. Have fun with it. And I hope you really enjoy this lab. So if you did, please do comment down below, hit that like, subscribe, hit the bell. You know, please do support the channel if you can uh, just by by hitting that thumbs up or that subscribe button. And that's it. My name is Heath Adams and I, I do thank you for joining me.